Hello and welcome to another edition of Agoke Siemu Nkuntabu on Happy FM. And Happy FM, in collaboration with the Ghana Anti-Corruption Coalition, a few months ago embarked on a campaign to prove whether there's indeed transparency and accountability in sports administration. The, the basis of this whole project is that we want to promote accountability and transparency in sports administration. Today, we have one of the key stakeholders here with us, and this is the second in the series of stakeholder engagement as we seek, as we, we seek to find the proper answers to questions of corruption, transparency, and accountability in football administration. I have here with me one of the astute sports administrators here in Ghana. He's a club owner. He owns Tema Youth. He's the president and founder of Tema Youth Football Club. He is an executive committee member of the Ghana Football Association. He is one of the members who is battling a case in court with the government of Ghana because they have, they have an injunction preventing them from operating as executive committee members of the Ghana Football Association. I have here with me Mr. Wilfred Osekweku Palmer. Thank you very much and welcome to Akuken Siemu Nkontabu. It's always a pleasure to be unhappy. Uh, uh, have a chat with your group. Well, you, Mr. Palmer, we know you. For those of us in the sports world, we know you very well. But for those of us who haven't heard of Mr. Palmer or don't know him very well, who is Mr. Palmer? You've been in football mm -hmm. for long. How many years have you been in football? Mr. Palmer is a football philanthropist and I'm an investment banker by profession. I come from the central region, and a fanti, of course. I must say that I played football at a grassroots level and also engaged myself in almost every institution that I attended. I was in their school team, including uh, Cape Coast University. And if you look at the fact that Cape Coast University always has a very formidable soccer team. I should tell you the caliber of a player that Palmer was. That notwithstanding, was teaching management related courses at St. Augustine's, I took up extra curriculum activities by coaching the school team as well. So for three consecutive times from 93 to 96, I qualified St. Augustine's to the Milieu Championships. And that included players like Michael Asian, Mathieu Amoa, Antonio Bodai, Don Botti, Ishmael Ado. And it should tell you the kind of scouting eye that I have at that level. That is what more or less gingered me to venture into football. But lest I forget, whilst on campus, that is Kebas, I was handling one of the teams in the hall, because we use that as an entertaining point every weekend. So although I'm not an AC Milan supporter, I was the organizer for AC Milan team within Ugua Hall. And I didn't know that I would take up to full-time football after school. Somewhere in 2005, I saw a talent in a player, Yaya Mohammed, the person you call Mumbo Yaya. And Yaya, I motivated him, encouraged him to join any of the teams at the premiership. He refused. And what he said was that he can only play for a team that I'm the owner. So this is what made me to nurture that idea. And from what we call Munchendi, it metamorphosed into Tama Youth. And Mr. Chairman joined me and Samuel Williams. We started Tama Youth, but I was the founder. And since 2005, May 27th, Tama Youth has been a bona fide uh, a club that has charted its course at the presence of Ghana Football Association. We've been in the premiership three times and gone back three times. And there are two divisions, currently we are in Division 1. And we are still nurturing the idea of returning, because that is what it is. But that notwithstanding, our main focus is on development 
of players and the promotion of the game. And this is what motivated me to vouch my candidature as one of the persons to serve on the executive committee as a Division I rep. So this has been my brief history. So as we speak, you are an executive committee member of the Ghana Football that, that is what it is. And because of my focus, what the FA did was that for about six to eight years running, I was placed in charge of the youth teams. I've been vice chairman for the under 17, then also migrated or was upgraded to 120. And the last time that appointments were made, I was made the substantive chairman for the Blasters. Uh, having served as the vice to George Free, I was moved and I have, I'm, I'm currently the chairman of the Blasters. It's quite gratifying that just like, just as we're trying to have, believe in ourselves, that 2019 is a reality. We find ourselves in a situation where football is not being organized. I have been with this team. We played Uganda. We played Congo. We went to Saudi Arabia. Beat Saudi Arabia. That participated in the World Cup 3-0 on their own uh, backyard. We moved further to J Japan and also beat Japan 2-0. We drew with Iceland 2-2. So I was of the view that the government should have reposed its confidence in the team. And the most important thing that would have happened to this government is for the Blasters to win the Afghan, having had that famine over about well over 35 years. These current squad have been positioned in such a manner that that dream could have been a reality. We have not given up on that. At the right time, we can pick up that dream. Yes, but Pama, we'll come back to the <laughs> issue of the government and the TFA in a bit. But if you're watching us, this project is proudly brought to you by Star Ghana and with funding from DFID, Danida, and the European Union. Mr. Osegu, you have been there before as a club administrator, as a club owner, as an ex school member of the GFA. There's a perception out there that there's a lot of corruption in football. There's a lot of non-transparency. There are a lot of accountability issues. If I ask you for your take on this, is there corruption in football administration? I will not even zero in on only football. Corruption in sports has been with us since ages. That is to quote uh, the ex-president John Kufo, Ajakun Kufo, His Excellency. People tend to think that when we talk of corruption in football, it's only exchange of money. That is the receiver and the giver are all guilty of that offense. No. It's when you try and gain unfair advantage over your opponent. That is, where, what, that is what we say a corruption has been occasioned. So if you take any of the banned substances in order for you to enhance your performances, and also make sure that you, you, you are able to win a competition from unfair perspective, you have engaged in corruption. When you take bribe as a club and you fix a match, you have engaged in corruption. Uh, you, you, it may interest you to know that the high incidence of corruption that we talk of these days involve the betting companies that have entered our sports and there is that high motivation for results to be influenced. If you are a club and you are about to go and play a game, let's say in town S, you tend to receive calls right from your exit point or entry point up to so exit point up to the entry point as to how that game should be played. 
Some have lived above reproach. Others have fallen victims to such advances. And the issue is how many of us can resist this, these uh, temptations? Even for how long will you be able to resist it? Some of the offers are so tempting that you cannot resist it. Within the judicial system that we operate, corruption can be said to have been occasion, especially when there is an issue and the issues are not placed in the way it should be in terms of what the position of our laws, the position of our statutes and the regulations, corruption is said to have been occasion. If a referee has been influenced and his interpretation to the laws of the game is impaired in any manner, corruption is said to have been occasion. So we have varied situations where corruption is supposed to have occurred. Even when players of different teams, but from the same family background, tend to say that, let's say a goalkeeper and a striker are brothers, and they say, oh, I want my brother to be the goal king. If I allow my brother to do that, unofficially, it's still corruption. So I will be very, very naive to sit here and deny the fact that corruption in sports, and for that matter, football, does not exist. It exists. And that is not only within these developing countries, even in the advanced democracies and advanced countries like Italy, uh, England, and all the other places that football is organized, we have corruption. But the proportion or the magnitude is what we are talking of. Some are in large proportions, others are in uh, minimal what proportion. That is where the difference is. Come on. yourself, you are a club owner. All these instances you've mentioned, have you been a part of any of these organizations before? Have you tried to grab a match official? I have, to, I, have to, I have to be specific. Even when I'm in a game, like the Tema Astrotef, I quite remember we went to Sogakope to play a, a game. Do you know what happened? Yes. They were watering the pitches during the recess. And what happened was that it made the pitch very slippery to gain advantage over the opponent. You can see that since you had unfair advantage over that, you are deemed to have engaged yourself in corruption. I quite remember we were to play Red Bull from the same Sugar Cup. They came, my supporters were on them. We wanted to win the game at all costs. So the supporters were very aggressive, overly aggressive, to the extent that the opposing team were instructed that the coach, you can't talk here. So just phantom a situation where a coach who is supposed to issue out instructions to his guys is told not to speak. We gain unfair advantage in the game. We're able to beat or win that game. And I must say, that is also a recipe for corruption. So I cannot deny that Tema Youth or myself, I've never engaged myself in corruption. Since I've been part and parcel of this game, there are times that you have to survive in terms of the game. There could be a situation where not necessarily to play soft for an opponent, but there are certain things that we do before a game. Even asking for prayers for my uh, players, well, that people usually call me chemicals, chemicals, chemicals. When I decide on a particular game, in order to give unfair advantage to the opponent, I will, can instruct my coaches or certain things that we do to back the club will not do it. That is also corruption. The coaches could be instructed that, oh, since we have a game next week, I don't want you to field player A, B, C, D just to weaken the team for your opponent. I've engaged in that before. But to say that you go and take money from a club, to go and take money for a club, in order for you to weaken your side, for them to beat you, I've never done that. No one I can. So, match, match officials. Match officials, yes. 
You see, people do not understand the mechanics of football. If you go to the FIFA tournament or CAF tournament, the moment referees come to Ghana, we give them indemnity. Is it part of corruption? It's not part of corruption. It's stated clearly within the statutes and the regulation. No. It's within our statutes and the regulations of FIFA. For indemnity to be paid by the host country. That is acceptable within the law. So if we borrow such practices, referee comes to Tema. I house the referee. I've put so many referees under accommodation and I've lost those games. That is not to say that whatever I did for them in terms of giving them lunch, which host countries and host teams do, and water or be hospitable to the referee, was able to influence his decision. Some are gullible. They may look at the protocol being extended and buy into it that, oh, my host is looking for certain favors. As we always say, they will give you the home advantage. But if you are not able to utilize it, the scoreline may not be well or proper for you. I have lost several games that my hospitality was even at his side. At the end of the game, the person has vis he has visited or four set of five, let me say set of five, including the match commissioner, and they say, take this as transportation. It's not corruption. That one, we all do it because it's within the ambit of the law. But if I give money and ask the referee, please, make sure I win this game, you take penalty for me. Any penalty you take, I'll give you 2,000 Ghana cities. It's done within the system. If really we're engaged seriously in this, my team will never have gone on relegation and be back. Some are playing it fair. Some even pay for fairness. Some even pay money for fairness. Because if you do pay for fairness, the person will come and he has an agenda. Interestingly, you may be engaged in a game with Hassel Folk. Hassel Folk may not even come into the game to influence the referee or the match officials. A third party will take it upon it itself, influence the match officials for you to lose a game. So all these things are being done in football, and we are aware of it. The only difference, marked difference, between what we are experiencing in relation to the NAS expose and what used to be the case was that we never had visual evidence or even audiovisual evidence to say that this club or this person has engaged himself in any corruptible act or not. That is the marked difference. Pama, let's come to the GF. And after the Brazil 2014 World Cup, the commission was set up to look into matters that arose before the qualification during the tournament and after the tournament. A lot of findings were made. Now, key to the findings were accountability issues that were raised against the GFP. So we go back to unclassified payments and indemnity, mm -hmm. indemnity payments. This was one of the items that the Jamaica Committee report called a waste of resources and something that could not be accountable for and that must be scrapped. If I ask you, Looking at that particular line item in the budget of the Ministry of, Ministry of Youth and Sports, was that unclassified payment and the failure to account for it an avenue for corruption to be perpetuated? Yeah, that is far from it. When the Jamaica Fair Commission's report was commissioned, the government issued a white paper on it. An unclassified payment and indemnity was never declared an illegality within the budget of the Ministry of Youth and Sports and for that matter, the FE. We furnish the ministry with a budget and they will go through it and approve the budget. 
That is the position of the law as presently situated. Because a white paper on that report, the white paper becomes the law. Other aspects of the commission's report that was accepted will also be part of the laws governing our football in the country, to which I accepted. Some of us, we have different ideas in relation to how that, how that commission ran its affairs. But definitely, since it was institutionalized by the government of the day, as a patriotic citizen of Ghana, I accepted whatever the report that came out. But frankly speaking, if you ask me, in my practice as a finance person, since the thing bordered on financial malfeasance within the operations of the 2014 Brazil, they should have commissioned a forensic audit on the activities of the blasters in relation to the World Cup. And when those malfeasance had been established, the commission could have picked on it and used it as the basis to prosecute those who were cited in the what in the forensic report. That wasn't the case. The commission was given the investigating power to do all those things. And when you do that, there is what we call conflict of interest may be occasioned. There is lack of segregation of duties. And the moment duties are not segregated, reports are skewed in a certain manner to a certain effect. And I don't think some of us liked the way certain things came out. It's, it's not surprising that at the, after the commission report had been issued, members went to court to contest the, the certain aspect of the commission report. So we should tell you that it's not sacrosanct. There are other aspects that must be dealt with. Going into it, I must tell you, people do not understand the financial administration regarding the operations of the blasters or all the national teams. GFA does not handle any pecuniary or financial uh, funds directly from the ministry. We will prepare the budget, give the budget to the ministry. The ministry approves of the budget. A disbursement officer or a schedule officer is appointed from the Ministry of Youth and Sports. They carry the purse of the team. When I went to New Zealand 2015, it was a disbursement officer, a schedule officer, who carried the money. When we are about to go and buy pepper, we have to go to the disbursement officer. We pass a memo, that approval process is made, and we go and buy it. So the GFA is used as a dustbin. We don't receive any money from the ministry. It's handled by the ministry. When the budget is about to be retired, is the schedule officer who goes to the ministry to retire the budget without the tacit involvement of the FA. By virtue of going forward, we can say that when that budget is about to retire, the HOD, that is head of delegation or the chef de mission, will have to go to the ministry. Then, whilst the schedule officer has his expenditure, the HOD will also take notice of the expenditure and will cross-check as to whether the, 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 the expenditure being presented to the ministry were really expended on the team or it went to other business. So when people were insinuating that the GFA was corrupt, ZKD, Basa, Basa, I asked myself, where is it? The fact is that funds were not given to the FE directly. It was given to a disbursement officer throughout the World Cup for that day. Let's come to the appearance fees. There is a whole lot of misconception, and people think that that was government money, taxpayers' money. It's a palpable lie. That money is part of FIFA prize money that was given to Ghana or the Blasters for participating in the World Cup. All countries are giving those funds, and that money, we call it a development fund. It should be used to develop football in Ghana, to the extent that funds could have been used to maybe prop up the juvenile football, because it's on the 
descendancy. If fans could have been channeled to prop up, let's say, women's football, would have taken women's football to a different height. If we had done other investments in the area with regard to pitches, with regard to even uh, supply of logistics or equipment to juvenile teams and all the other teams participating at the grassroots level, it would have had a ripple effect on the football industry. But the moment we returned from Brazil, the GFA issued a check of our $4.2 million to pay for the appearance fees that the government pre-financed. This was the first time as a financial a, a person or an investment banker that I saw a debtor trying to pay his debt to a creditor and the creditor refusing to take up the check. It was to a certain effect that Oh, the money came from the government. But the long and short of it all was that the funds that the government expended in relation to appearance fees were returned to the coffers. So why would people hold the FA to the coefficient principle that was being preached by uh, President Yantichi? I wouldn't say that the status quo must continue. If Congress of the FA share the strongest opinion that no appearance fees should be paid to players. So be it. We all go to Congress and we discard that practices. Or no appearance fees or honorarium should be paid to any management committee member. We all go to Congress and take a decision on that. But so far as that has been agreed by convention and in principle that appearance fees must be paid in order to ginger and motivate the players to channel the kind of results we are looking for, nobody has the moral right to say that, oh, we all approve or conventionally, appearance fees must be paid. And since Palmer was given $100,000, Palmer is a corrupt person. Our accounts are always there for the public to see. Because when we go to Congresses, we lay the accounts bare before the Congress. It's just like a wedding ceremony. You either voice your opinion on an issue or you forever remain silent. But, but, um, on the coefficient issue, the coefficient of two, coefficient of five, coefficient of seven, the Jamaica Committee report stated that an amount of 577,500 mm -hmm. went to the GFA. Out of that amount, 165 went to management committee members of the Black Stars. An outstanding amount of 412,500 United States dollars. I said, how much, how much was that? 500? One, yes, 577, 500. Okay. Yes. That outstanding 412,000 United States dollars remains unaccountable. For that because is... the Jamaica committee <laughs> requested for who were the beneficiaries of this amount and how much each beneficiary received. That document never came out, but we are talking about accountability here. Uh, that is what it may seem to you, that those funds were not accounted for. Let me give you a practical example. When we went for the AFCON 2015 in Equatorial Guinea and the team placed second, the jeep that was distributed, did it go to any management committee member? The playing body had it. I'm told people within ministry had it, the coaches had it, part of the executive or the MCO also had it. It should clearly demonstrate to you that when we talk of prize money or when we talk of disbursement of such funds, it doesn't inure to the benefit of only the management committee members of the FP. I've served at the under 17 level. I said that on a 20 level, in all these instances, any funds with regard to honorarium, the management committee will take its portion. The secretariat at the FA will also be giving part of it. People within ministry are giving part of it. It goes as far as the corridors of power. In the sense that Whenever you present budgets, 
somebody from the Secretariat, Alessandro Santi usually, who follow up. Sunny will do a communique on that. Uh, uh, Ike will write a letter. Alessandro Santi will follow up. So you have activated the Secretariat of the FE. Kwame may be engaged in one way, uh, in something one way or the other. Udro Abbott may be engaged in something, depending on which uh, team is participating. At the end of it all, Udro is not part of the management committee. He's a secretary to the management committee. Do you think it's morally right for all the management committee to take the honorarium and say that Udro, since you, uh, you are just a secretary to the committee, you don't merit even a single dollar from whatever we've had. The next time run, if you send Odro, Odro take this letter to the ministry. What do you think will happen? The letter may take two weeks before getting to the ministry. Your letter will get to the ministry. And since you are the only person who benefited and profited from the largesse, it gets to the ministry and bureaucratic procedures will be activated. By the time your budget is approved, it will take several years for that to happen. So we had a principle that a certain percentage comes to the FA, another percentage is retained within ministry, another percentage is retained within the corridors of power. What comes to the FA, certain percentage goes to the secretariat, certain percentage goes to the MCO or the executive, then certain percentage goes to the, what, to the management committee. But executive committee of the FA are not part of this processes that my former president described as the coefficient. He never elaborated on that, but people felt that was an avenue for corruption. As far from that, all that he wanted to point out was that so many people profited from it. If we had been that bold to mention, eh, you could see that the Jamaica Commission's uh, uh, sitting, part of it was observed in camera. Do you know the rationale behind it? Sensitive information would have been revealed to the public. And at the end of it all, confidentiality would have been breached and a whole lot of things would have happened. On the issue of unclassified payments, the government categorically issued a white paper with regard to the fact that that practice must still continue. In the sense that every corporate institution, we call it Corporate secrets. Corporate secrets are not revealed. If contractors should come to you and tell you the processes and the protocols that they observe in order to win contracts, you will marvel. In every industry, these are the secrets that gives you unfair advantage over your opponent. I was on record to have made a comment on unclassified payments. That landed me a dialogue with the ethics committee. At the end of it all, I was made to apologize. And subsequently said, unclassified payment, I will never, never touch on unclassified payment. But the fact is that, don't get it wrong, it was never used to bribe referees. I elaborated further to say that if you use it to hospitalize a referee. You've not done anything wrong. I quite to remember Kwame Baniako. They traveled to Algeria, and my friend, a very good friend, whilst he was being interviewed, said, oh, the people, they've put us in a very comfortable environment. It's a very luxurious environment. Do you know the question I asked myself? No, it's a, a very comfortable position. The cool hotel, everything is good. Do you know the question I ask myself? If you, the opponent, you were in comfort, and the referee and the match officials were in luxury, but definitely they would let them feel special. At the end of it all, all these things are done to ensure that the referee's discretion, I think law five or so, you always have his discretionary powers. But, 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 <laughs> The, with, with the issue of hospitalizing workers, that should be very well dealt with by indemnity payments. And classified payments still remained undefined. And that was why Jamefe, the white paper 
claim that mm -hmm. it has to be justified. Whatever payments are made under the name and classified payment must be justified with other certificates. Mm -hmm. The issue with regards to what happened bef before Brazil mm -hmm. was that those figures were not accounted for. So it's it, far, it, it doesn't seem from it. that government was in favor of a classified payment, but they, they, they provided how it should be accepted. A caveat, yeah. Yes. Not to it, sir, madam. Let me, let, me, let me say this. Referees come into the country. We all know that by FIFA regulations, a three-star hotel will be okay for a FIFA biased referee. I go further to put the, this referees up at Kempiski, five-star. When I come before the government in order to justify this spending, all that I have to do is that we wanted the referee to feel special. And that is why we took the referee to Kempiski instead of maybe Don Palma Hotel. That is the justification. To justify doesn't mean that uh, you need to virtually account for every penny here and there. As to why certain expenditure is being made or why certain costs are being incurred, you need to explain why a given alternative is being adhered to and not the other way around. I'll give you a critical example. We're going to Turkey whilst we were to play in Senegal. The weather conditions were different. I was made to justify as the chairman of the committee as to why we should go to Turkey. I cited training facilities in Turkey, availability of hotels, easy access to airline as compared to Morocco. We also cited the fact that most clubs or countries participating in the competition had pitch camp in Turkey. So when you go, you have certain countries to play with. We were able to play Azerbaijan, where they were also in competition. We were able to play uh, teams in the Scandinavian countries because within that time frame, that is February to March, the weather in the Scandinavian countries, very cold. Ukraine, Russia, very cold. So they all migrate to Antalya to pay their accounts there. So if really you wanted very good opponents to play with, the best place to go is Antalya. That reason sat well with the ministry. They submitted it to the flat staff house then. It was approved. That is how come the under 20 prepared for uh, African Youth Championship 2015 in Turkey and not Morocco or Senegal itself. These are the justification. Give the rationale behind the expenditure. So it should be within the tenets of the law. Palmer, there's another issue that has bedeviled the GF, the issue of transparency. On the scale of 0 to 10, where would you rate the FA when it comes to transparency with regards to financial dealings and transparency with regards to information dissemination to the media? I'll put it as 7 over 10 in relation to the fact that certain vital information about the FA with regard to our corporate governance, with regard to certain major decisions, should have been placed on the website of the FA readily. I had gone through the websites of various associations, including that of FIFA, and every time their financial statement is there. When I take any financial statement, I'll be able to read whether that company is doing well or is not doing well. I'll be able to know. Do you know that if a CEO of a corporate institution resigns, it's a big news. The reason being that the replacement can revamp that, economy, that corporate institution or it can dwindle the fortunes of that corporate institution. So as somebody who is very adroit in the financial system, I know that the financial system or at the corporate world thrives on information. If the information is not made readily available, it speaks volume about the particular institution. Why are you retracting that story? Why are you holding forth? 
that, uh, that, that news from the media. It's their right to know. It's the right of Ghanaians to know. Why are we suppressing? If the information is not confidential, why are we so much glued to our chest in regard to certain information? So in relation to that, I would say that we have not done well. We have also failed to highlight on certain positive things that has happened to the FA with regard to transparency. For people to know that the FA is accountable, the FA is transparent, the FA is responsible. But these three terminology, they work hand in hand. You cannot do away with one and leave the other. KPMG or PricewaterhouseCoopers is sent by FIFA to come and audit what we call FIFA Forward Now, formerly Financial Assistance Program. They issue a clean bill of health on our finances, sorry, finances and say that the FA had dealt diligently with all the funds that had been given to the FA. And such information is not given to the public. So whilst people would be saying, Sikadi, Basa, 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 this could have gone all the way to erode the fact that the FA is not engaged in any corrupt act. Yet we fail to put the information out there. We meet Pricewaterhouse, or one of the big six, now it's big five, for four solid to five days. They may even send another person, an over, somebody with oversight responsibility, either from Cote d'Ivoire or from South Africa, to come and be with the FE for about a week or two, or to go through our books and issue a claim bill or otherwise. We've run through Go projects. We've had approval for subsequent Go projects. And the tenets of Go project is that if you are not able to judicially use the funds allocated for the previous project, subsequent funds are not given for your next project. Yet we are not able to highlight it. So when you are a journalist and you go on air, you sit there and say, Matisse, Sikana Kuraya, they are will be personally. It's, 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 it's speculative. It's, it's, it doesn't jive. So don't pounce on half information and just work on it. Oh, they fail to tell us. Oh, they are now telling us that uh, Puma gives them money and what not. Ah. Which one is very easy for you to know that I'm corrupt? Puma gives me money. I'm not disclosing or telling Ghanaians that I have not received any money from Puma. Now we are telling we've received money from Puma. And when we, when, we, when we sign said contracts, that has what we call contracts, sponsorship, that are in kind, they issue as kits. But Puma knows well, I'm not in Puma. I'm in Adidas. Adidas will know that having been a sponsor of EFI, if we don't motivate them to achieve results, there's no way our brand will have the kind of mileage, will have the kind of brand, uh, sorry, brand uh, 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 advantage that we want to have over our opponents. Surely, they will not do things in. So in every contract, investment bankers will say, we add what we call sweetness. Certain clauses are put in there to make it attractive for whoever is going to perform on the contract to do. So what they will say is that if the blasters are able to qualify for AFCON, will give you 20,000 euros. If the blasters are able to get to the semi-finals or quarter-finals of, now it's going to be the next round of AFCON, we will pay X amount. If they are able to move to the quarter-finals, we will pay another amount. If any of the junior national teams are able to do A, B, C, D, when you go to the World Cup, this is the X amount that is being given. So milestones are set within their contract based on if clauses. So you don't read it as, oh, uh, you have received 10,000 from Puma. When in actual fact, I couldn't execute the milestone that was set in the contract. So when we are finally discussing such contracts, and I tell you the sum of the contract is 900,000 euros. They say, oh, when you, when you do this, you get this. When you do this, you get that. So you go and add the if or the conditional clauses and say that, oh, what they give you is about $1.2 million. You are not telling Ghanaians the truth. It becomes very difficult. So if somebody like Pama, who is well adroit in the corporate world, comes to explain 
the situation to be. They say, you are defending the question, you are defending the FA. The FA that I'm part of, when I defend it, what is wrong with it? So yet, people find something wrong with it. And I don't think that is the right way to go. Some of us will always stand up to the truth, nothing but the truth. How are you give the FA above average when it comes to transparency? When it comes to accountability, a lot of your sponsors in recent times, mm -hmm. the perception is that they pulled out because of accountability issues. On the scale of 0 to 10, where would you put the FA when it comes to accountability ratings? In relation to sponsorship? Sponsorship. 8%. <laughs> it's very easy. Because Palmer, in recent times, Rice Master pulled out of the Black Stars. For la, what, Ashanti Gold pulled out of the a, Black Stars. Okay. Baltic pulled out of the Black Stars. GNPC were ordered to pull out of the Black Stars <laughs> because of the perception that there's a failure of accountability on the part of them. Let, let me say that most of the companies that you have mentioned run into economic difficulties. Rice Master, uh, what uh, Guinness Ghana? They are doing business in Ghana, or they were doing. They are doing business in Ghana. For that matter, if the economic functions are not favorable, you don't insist that they should be. They should be in the sponsorship ad infinitum. I don't think that's the right full way to go. In relation to GMPC, I would say that that decision was a personal decision, and I don't want to delve deeper into it because. The personality involved, I respect him that very much, and he's more or less a fatherly figure to me. But I'm of the view that it has to do with personal issues between President Yantichi and that very person. I don't want to double into that for obvious reasons. The first capital plus, they, they cited restructuring as the basis. So I've never seen any of the sponsors who is saying that the FA failed to account for the sponsorship money before it. The relationship that we had with GMPC, two million was allocated to the FA for its use. But I can tell you that not all these two million was drawable. You draw it based on satisfying certain conditions. Let's say we, pay, we play a friendly game. FA will have to submit expenditure. That was incurred on it before they were proof of your next disbursement, which means that what we call control measures had been put in place to ensure that funds disbursed were accounted for before further disbursements were made. I don't think somebody sitting at GMPC, I know Mood very well, I respect him within the financial service sector. I had engagements with him whilst I was with Capital Alliance. He was uh, uh, working for Standard Chartered Bank in, you know, as a corporate uh, uh, person and he's one of the industry standards so far as the area is concerned. Moods will not allow his image to be dragged into such disrepute. So funds will have to be accounted for before further disbursements were made. People were saying President Yantechi went to Holland with a certain amount, came back with a lower amount. Did he go to buy a house there? The team was engaged in a, a, a tournament. They were on a training tour. And the players that accompanied, certain sums will have to be paid to them. Search list, it was submitted to GMPC. So how on earth will somebody claim somewhere that he, he, somebody has taken money, he's used it for other purposes here? No, you cannot do that. Why would government disperse funds three or four clear months to a competition? Where was the money kept? Did somebody invest it in something that they profited illegally? Why was there a delay for the monies to be sent to Brazil? What prevented the ministry from dispersing the money at the point that the team was going to Brazil. But the money had been issued for an intended purpose, and the intended purpose was that the, uh, how do you call it, the uh, appearance fees of the players should be pre-financed by the government. When the GFA returns from the competition, the GFA will reimburse 
the government. Which was that lead argument signed? Why did the ministry fail to send the money together with the team? What was the money doing in Ghana? When definitely the disbursement point couldn't have been Ghana? The, the policies that we were operating, that is the angle that the commission failed to, to highlight. To and I must say that so to some of us who were treasury lookers or industry watchers, we felt that the thing was skewed towards a particular direction, and that particular direction was that the F3 was being made or was made to full back. Thank you, mind did not denigrate, did not put football in a bad light to the outside world or globally. I don't think the kind of degradation, the decay within the system is beyond imagination. The only bit I would say was that most of the scenes were not natural. If, let's say, you want to investigate Palmer as an undercover journalist, the person may even opt to work in my house. Out of that, they will get to know whether I deal in illicit drug business. Palmer, is he a legitimate business person? Is he really who he is? Mama, you have earned a name or a niche for yourself. Will you destroy it for Peter's or for any other reason? If you cannot destroy it for any other reason, don't do it. So you have to have that self-discipline. You have to have that willpower to be able to resist some of these things. Whilst at the under-17 level, under-20 level, temptations were there. Clubs will call you. Uh, managers will call you, but check on any one of them. They will tell you, we were never, never able to corrupt this person. I always take solace and confidence from Fred Krenzel. He's been my mentor so far as football is concerned. He's an astute administrator of par excellence, and I'll forever be grateful for having allowed me to serve as his vice, president, uh, vice chairman of the FA. And I'm also grateful to President Yantichi, if not for him having given me the opportunity to serve in his administration. I don't think people would have known me as Palmer. That is why I'll forever be loyal to Kwesi Yantichi for giving me the opportunity. People should not get me wrong. We all make mistakes, but if you get close to Kwesi, Kwesi will tell you, I've seen those who proclaimed that they were loyal to me in this current state. May God be our guide going forward. Being very close to Kwesi, has he regretted his That We've not gotten to that stage. When you find your friend in distress or uh, under such critical condition, is to get very close to the person, empathize with him, try and understand few issues. And under the circumstances, the most important factor here will be for you to console him. And you do that with the greatest of respect. He's been your boss. He's been somebody that you have looked up to as industry standard. So when you are making certain, certain proclamation, you have to be extra careful. In our own private way, certain things have been discussed that I would like to hold very confidential. He's a nice person to relate to. And I quite remember in the initial stages it wasn't a good sight going to meet him or talking to him even through telephone conversation or meeting him personally. It wasn't that easy for him and the family where he has kids and wife. 
So he should clearly tell you that it wasn't easy on the family. But there was a time we got there, having interacted, we passed the comment that President, we are very happy that you are back on track. He looked his familiar self. He was himself, nothing beyond that. And the rehabilitation process is going well. At the end of it, or how he will come back into society is what he has to figure out because he's too young, full of energy, full of ideas that I will never, never tell him to abandon, but to pursue it to the best of his abilities. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilfred Osebu It's been an exciting engagement with you, and we thank you very much for your time on Agrokensi Omo All we seek to do is to promote transparency and accountability in sports administration in Ghana. We appreciate your time and your suggestion today. This has been another edition of Agrokensi Omo We are being with the president and owner of Tema Youth Football Club, Mr. Wilfred Osebu Kupama. He is the ex he's an executive committee member of the Ghana Football Association. He told us everything we need to know, from indemnity payment to unclassified payment to accountability issues of the FA. He has given the FA a clean bill of health. The rest is for you to do. Thank you very much for joining us. This project was brought to you by Star Ghana and proudly founded by DFID, Danida, and the European Union. Thank you very much for joining us.